Okay, so um, Hawkins talks about God imminent transcendent. In classical religion, it's very much, especially with prayer, set up so that, you know, I pray to I pray to God for salvation. So it's very sort of like God is transcendent. God is out there and here's me in my body and I'm praying to God out there, God transcendent, uh, to help me uh, with my problems and stuff and my separation. And there's God imminent, you know, the kingdom of heaven is within. Or I find God by going within or... Um, or uh, if I'm looking for God, God is on the inside. So it's not so much like there's a me trying to connect with a, a God out there somewhere. So the different so and uh, the question I was talking about how the body now seems very distant and uh, distant out there. And uh, there's also a feeling of the nothingness, which is, um, which is not connected to that which is in duality and separation. Uh, uh, and the, how, how, how do they relate? What is the meeting of the two? Well, for me, it's just, um, so the experience of and the relationship of God transcendent imminent is just based on what are the current, within the spiritual seeker, what are the current dualities that are sting be still being held in consciousness in the ego? So if there is, a, and what is the relationship of spiritual teachings that the spiritual seeker has identified with most for transcendence? So sometimes, for example, um, you know, one can undo the dualities of body, thoughts, me, you, God out there, God, me, which is a more of a, a spiritual release uh, of, of the dualities of time, location, space, body, feelings, through a kind of a, an initial uh, dualistic transcendent relationship of the experience of separation with something out there which is more powerful, which is transcendent. And through the practices like praying for things to be released, the dualities of, um, of a me and a transcendent God out there starts to dissolve so that one is starting to experience more of the non-dual fields, like, oh, the feeling of a God out there and a me relating to a God out there is starting to dissolve and starts to disappear. So you can make those. And the, um, the experiencing of the spiritual seeker will vary depending on how those dualities and how those how that relationship undoes the dualities of the spiritual seeker. The same process occurs with relating to divinity as God imminent, um, which is a bit like a self-inquiry or the observer process or looking within process of dissolving whatever dualities are still being held in mind with the spiritual seeker to dissolve things like time, body, thoughts, feelings, a me and uh, a me as a this relating to a that, whatever it is, time, bodies, objects, um, and collapsing those dualities until there is no um, imminent, uh, God imminent or anything out there or a me relating to a God transcendent. So the experience of the spiritual seeker will just depend on whichever method is used and which dualities are being collapsed and in what order. So you can get, um, like, for example, with, um, I'll, I'll give uh, examples of both using the God transcendent and imminent. I'd say a good strategy for God imminent is self-inquiry, the observer, and a good, um, a good strategy for God transcendent is prayer, or of course in miracles, like I pray to God for a miracle to see this differently, or I cancel my beliefs. So that would be a good God transcendent uh, uh, collapse of dualities. And a, a good trans, uh, a good God imminent strategy of transcending a duality would be the observer. So they're, they're different pathways of collapsing the experience of dualities within a spiritual seeker. So let's say, um, okay, so if I'm using a God transcendent strategy to cl collapse my experience of dualities, um, so it was mentioned from the questioner, like the body's is starting to feel more distant and less important and there's an experiencing 
of an infinite nothingness that is beyond the dualities of a body and the world and whatever is being experienced, which is wonderful. I could I could potentially do that through the transcendent strategy, like using A Course in Miracles. So it'd be like, oh, I think the body is me. But then I could pray for a miracle to see my body differently as being me. Or I could uh, say God did not create my body. Uh, it's not real. Or I am not my body. It's not real. Um, uh, so that would start to collapse the idea that the body is me or even to, for the body to be experienced. And eventually, you know, it'll, it'll start to feel more distant or unimportant. And I might start to experience the non-dual feel beyond objects. Um, so that would be a, a way of using the God transcendent strategy or something like A Course in Miracles for transcendence. Or I could use the a God imminent, a God, what I'd call a God imminent strategy, which would be something like the observer or self inquiry or who's experiencing the body. Or, uh, or you know, so well, I'm the body. No, no. Well, who's who's experiencing the body? And, and I go and I look to the observer or look within and I see there's nothing there. And if I keep doing that, eventually the body starts to feel more distant and starts to be tracked less or seems to be more vaguely experienced and then eventually there's the recognition of an infinite silence or an infinite stillness um, which is always here even if there is a, a vague image or no image of the body so that would be the way of using a god imminent uh, strategy but they both can end up in the non-dual field into that infinite silence that transcends the world and in, an infinite silence which is beyond the world where there is no world being experienced, where it's faded away into nothing. 